Welcome to HB RV Lifestyle, the podcast. I am the host, the Honey Badger, here to give it to you straight and transparent about the RV business, as well as other things. And today's episode, I'm going to talk about some breaking news out of the RV industry. I'm also going to talk about RV loans and financing because there seems to be some confusion um, and, and I want to clarify some things so everybody's on the same page with that. Uh, I'm going to share some of the new data I've gotten on the frame failure and frame flex situation. And then I'm going to spread out some other updates that I think are going to be very important to RVers, whether you're out RVing already, you're looking to buy one this year, uh, maybe you're looking to buy one in a couple years, maybe your factory, a dealership, doesn't matter. I think a lot of what I'm going to sprinkle in in this episode is going to be highly educational for all of you, okay? So let me start with some of the breaking news. And there were two sides of people asking me questions. There were people worried Camping World is going out of business, and there are those that are going, yay, Camping World's going out of business. Camping World is not going out of business, folks, okay? They are at this point, as much as people want them to fail, they're too big to fail, okay? But what I'm referring to is there was an article with a lot of double talk. It's, it's in rvbusiness.com. It says, Camping World sees Q4 loss, year-over-year -year record used revenue. So, hey, we got bad news, but then we got good news. But the good news is also bad news as well. And that's the way this article reads. So um, if you get a chance, it was done on February 23rd. Uh, I'm not going to read through the whole thing. I'm just going to give you the cliff notes of it, okay? So the cliff notes basically state that in their estimation, and I'm going to be very emphatic on the word estimation because they don't truly know yet, but they think that they have about 7,500 new 2023s on their lots between 240 stores. Now, they also say that they have 80% 2024 models currently. And again, estimated. Remember that they are on the New York Stock Exchange. They are a publicly traded company. So in their mind, they have to release data that may or may not reflect the total inventory so they basically, how that works, to give you guys an idea, okay, is they take whatever they have on order, and this is any corporation, this is any dealership, they take what they have on order compared to what they have on the lot, and they combine that, because there's something called floor plan or flooring. So what that means, it's, it's basically a loan on the inventory that's in stock. And Camping World does floor... They're new units. They pay cash for their used. They floor their new. So when you go and order stuff, what Camping World does and every other dealership does is they give usually a purchase order number and then they the factory goes and siphons the money from the bank, from the loan. <clears throat> and then what they do is they wait in between three and seven weeks to have a transport driver show up, pick up the unit, and deliver it to the dealership lot. So when they say that they have 80% of their inventory is 2024s, they are including anything sitting on the factory lot that's in their name that's paid for. Because if you do the math, okay, there's no way they're at 80%. If you do not include the stuff that they are waiting on, transport drivers or parts or whatever the case may be. And here's why I'm saying that. Let's, let's just say, for example, they have 240 stores and they have exactly 7,500 2023 year models on their lot. Remember that not every single camping world has 500 units of stock. The majority of your dealerships no matter if it's a Lazy Days or a Bishes or a General or a Mom and Pop store, the majority of them are small locations that carry between, let's call it 75 
and 125 new product on their lot. Now that now you think you that number seems small, but that's actually a large amount of inventory. Okay, uh, I remember when I was working at Barber RV, we were working with 50 to 60 new because of our size and our location. So generally, a medium-sized dealer to large dealer is going to be right around 75 to 125 new units in stock. So if they have, if you divide 7,500 into 240, that gives you roughly 31 units or 2,023s. So if you have 100, and, 100 new in stock at a location, right, how is that 80%? It's not. Okay, so what they're including in that 80% is either stuff they have already floored, stuff they've already ordered, stuff they're expecting to come in. At that point, they're going to be probably more than 80% ratio. All right. Now, that's nothing nefarious. That's nothing they're doing wrong. But that's the way like they that every corporation tries to control the narrative to keep investors. Because realistically, even though this article is public knowledge and people can read it, it, it's not directed towards the customer or consumer. It's directed towards the investors. It's directed towards the people they're hoping don't pull out of the stock market with them and buy more stock, put more money in, put more cash flow in, invest, get new fresh investors in, try to create some positive energy into the industry to try to encourage investors, okay? Now, here's where, the and, and again, they talk about the correction of the used market, okay? They talk about that they are no longer really buying used inventory because they're waiting for the market to correct itself. Now, if you go back in history, I've been saying this for 13, I've been saying this since October of 2000, or I'm sorry, August of 2022. Since August of 2022, I have told you guys that the values of used is going to tank because dealerships are starting to sell their new inventory for losses. So that's pressing the pricing down on new. So what does that do to the used? It pushes it down. Now, the reason why they say the revenue is because I can guarantee you that if you looked outside of some stuff they took in early and stuff, I can bet you that flurry of used inventory that Camping World was aggressive with and bought back in mid-2022 through mid-last year in 2023, they were ended up buried in that inventory. And I can guarantee you that what they are doing is they unloaded their used because they were underwater. And if I remember correctly, and stop me if I'm wrong, Camping World pays cash for their used inventory. So all that was happening for a year is some of this inventory was just sitting on, de on the Camping World lots, not moving, and it's just cash sitting there. So remember that a company, no matter if it's a dealership, a Target, a Walmart, your local liquor store, Businesses do not run on profit, they run on cash flow. A business can show as much profit as they want in the books, but if they're not getting the flow of cash in a we'll say in a in a in a in a positive manner, it doesn't matter what kind of profit you make. So they liquidated a bunch of their used. I did the same thing here at the dealership. I took trades in that were like three to four to five months old that usually you hold on to until springtime because they're bunkhouse trailers. A lot of people are looking for used and the book value just tanked. So I was underwater in about five or six trade-ins and I burned through them this month. I took some losses on them, but we owned that used inventory in cash. So it was just sitting there and all that's going to happen is all it's going to do is keep losing value, okay? By the way, this is one reason why I tell people, don't pay cash for an RV. I keep telling people this, but everybody tells me I'm an idiot. 
but if you pay you're you're basically lighting your money on fire if you pay for a unit in cash in full you might as well finance a portion of it put enough down and finance a portion of it okay don't burn all your cash into an rv put a good chunk down finance it for a nice long term and enjoy it and that way you have the cash still laying around what if something comes up this is why i keep telling folks like i just told some folks today okay hmm. sorry drinking water i told some folks today even if you have the cash to buy it in cash what happens i gave him this example i said what happens if you put step writing a check for 100 grand what if you put 30 down and finance 70,000 plus whatever the tax is? And he looked at me and I go, and let's say just something comes up where you where you need cash and you saved all this money and now you don't have any. Now you're trying to run on credit cards. Would you rather have credit card debt or would you rather have a vehicle debt? Right? So one of the things that, that I'm trying to explain to people when it comes to financing and RV loans is RV loans, car loans, boat loans, mortgages, that's what our economy is based on. It's based on debt. Your cash means nothing. Your silver, your gold, your Bitcoin means nothing period. You can argue with me all you want, but here's where, here's my only argument towards, and it's the only valid argument, okay, is if an EMP, uh, let's call it an EMP event happened worldwide, your gold, silver, Bitcoin, cash mean jack shit. What will matter then? Water, food, shelter, okay? You guys ever watch the show The Walking Dead? Have you ever seen anybody in The Walking Dead exchange money or gold or silver for goods? No, they traded fishing poles. They traded goods. Money, the value of silver and gold and platinum and Bitcoin, all that stuff, it's all fake, it's fake. It means nothing. It's just, you know, Jeremy Irons in a movie, I can't remember what the movie was called, said it perfectly. It's all it is is a piece of paper with a bunch of pictures on it. Uh, so that way we don't kill each other for something to eat. Yet we hold on to cash or pay cash for things and act like that's like the world. So if you actually look at the super rich, Okay, when they go buy vehicles, they finance them. They don't pay cash for vehicles. Never have. The super rich either lease them or finance them. Why? Because they have the understanding that debt is better. And I'm not talking about go nuts debt. I'm talking about responsible debt. Debt is better when it comes to a vehicle purchase. You want to pay cash for something... Pay cash for real estate. Cash should never go into something that loses value because all you're doing is nuking your money. I'd rather see you pay cash for a house or an apartment complex because at least that's something that has the possibility of increasing in value. Right? You know, so it's just a mindset, right? Now, at the same time, there's been a lot of questions because RV Miles uh, did a video three weeks ago. No, probably less than that. I don't remember. But anyway, he was talking about uh, a lot of things I was talking about in my last video. But th by the way, if, you, uh, if you're if you watching this, RV Miles, thank you very much for the shout out. Thank you very much for uh, uh, also putting the information on your platform so we can reach more people. But what he was saying was not meant to counteract what I was saying or to add on to it. What he was saying was RV interest rates were going down voluntarily by the banks. It's only happened once and it's not going to happen again until the Fed lowers their rates significantly. Okay, so let's say 
end of this month, end of February, here comes the Fed. Jeremy Powell gets up, says, okay, we're going to lower the base rate to 5% to 5.5%. Banks are not going to lower their rates anymore. They're going to keep it the same status quo until it really goes down. They are already... So to give you guys an idea... They, they borrow the money from the Fed to lend to us, right? That's the majority of lending. There isn't enough people that put money into a savings account for us to, for the bank to use, okay? So what they do is they leverage the money and leverage the accounts and buy more money from the Fed, right? I mean, it's more complicated than that, but I'm just trying to simplify it. It's a lot more complicated than that. But I, I'm simple. I'm trying to keep it simple. So there's a cost to it. So let's say it's five point five and a half percent, and they're giving out seven point nine nine as a rate. Their margin is only two and a half percent. So at two and a half percent, okay, you have to keep branches open. You have to pay employees. You have to have insurance. There's a lot of things involved. So for them to make money. At these new lowered rates, where you have some rates at 699, 799, eight and a half, rates have gone down. But in order for them to make money, now they have to have more volume. They have to take on more loans. So there was a double edged sword in it. If the economy, if the RV economy does not have a good spring or a good let's call it March, April, May, then more than likely the rates are going to go back up. Because if they can't get the volume that they need to pay the bills, quote unquote, then they're going to raise the rate back up. So I want to make that clear because I think a lot of folks are like, okay, rates are going to keep going down. No, RV Miles never said they're going to keep going down. He just repeated the same thing I said, which is that the banks lowered the interest rate voluntarily. So all he was doing was just kind of repeating what I was saying because he's got a lot bigger platform. The, 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 the two of them have a big platform, 100,000 plus subscribers, a couple million views a month plus. Um, so in reality, he took the good information I had and just regurgitated it to an audience that hasn't seen it yet. Because remember, I'm still this small little guy. I, I'm, I'm this little ant in the world still. I don't have that big of a platform. 10,000 subscribers on the main channel. You know, I think I'm up to 10,000 downloads on Spotify. You know, 10,000 on iHeart. Um, you know, and then on the, the YouTube version of this podcast... That if you're watching this, we have 30, almost 4,000 subscribers. So, you know, I, I'm still the little, little tiny guy in, in a really big world. And I appreciate all the help I can get getting the information out. So, it, now the other thing I really want everybody to pay attention to is, you know, when, when like for example, I advertise on my website 6.99% financing. When people come and ask me how I get that rate, I have two banks that will give that rate out. But there's a lot of things that need to happen. First off, the dollar amount finance needs to be right around where I quoted. So when I do that kind of thing, what I do is I put, I, when, when I quote or put a quote of a payment and an interest rate, first of all, I don't include tax in, in my payments, okay? Because everybody's tax rate's different depending on location, and some people don't pay tax. Um, but if you look, it act, I actually put what the amount down I'm really going to need to have a shot at that rate. So we've had that rate for now five weeks, and I've had four people out of 37 qualify for the 6.99. Most folks are qualifying for 7.5, Seven nine nine, eight and a half, eight nine nine. So I had a seven twenty FICO score uh, the other day. He was at eight point seven four. 
Um, I had a 760 score at eight and a quarter. I had a 755 score at 799. So credit score is just one piece of the puzzle. So down to the three things that really affect an interest rate is number one is the dollar amount finance. If you're financing a $250,000 motorhome, you're going to get a lot better interest rate than if you finance a $25,000 trailer. Okay. Number two is the percentage of money down. If you're putting between 25 and 30% down, you're going to get a better interest rate than if you put zero or 10% down. Okay. And lastly, very lastly, is your credit history slash score. I've had 800 scores that qualify for 17%. I've had 686 scores qualify for 8.99. So it's all relative. Credit history and credit score combined. Now, the other really thing I want to point out is I'm already seeing a trend of dealerships in 20 groups basically stating that they're going to start raising their prices faster than I predicted. I thought April 1st, April 15th, I thought right around there is probably when they'll start, dealerships will stop taking losses because the manufacturers are not participating, guys. They're not participating like they should, okay? Is there $200 here, $750 there? Yeah. But when you're taking a $15,000 beating on a fifth wheel to move it, $750, I mean, you could piss it down the drain just buying batteries, propane, and stuff like that. And then if you want the big, big money, they want you to reorder product even though you're overstuffed. So instead of behaving like the auto industry where they just voluntarily give dealers money to move product and give an allocation of vehicles. They're just being egotistical. So that being said, I don't think there's very much time left to get those deals I've been talking about. Those deals I've been talking about since October of 2023, I think are going to go away here probably first or second week of March. Today's the 25th of February. I think it's, I think you got about five, five to 10 days left to get a unit at a loss. Okay. Now, that being said, I'm not telling you go run out the door and go buy your RV now. Okay. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is if you're sitting on the sidelines waiting for something to crash, you, you're going to miss out on it. Okay. It, it's the way it is. Just like everybody told me in 2010, it's not done crashing yet. We're going to wait till it fully crashes. 2011 came around and the RV business did nothing but trajectory up. I've heard it. I've heard it a million times. Oh, you know, I'm going to be able to buy that $500,000 Tiffin bus for 10 grand. I mean, that's an exaggeration, but that's how, that's what people's mindsets are right now. Some of them, not everybody, but there's a percentage of you that are sitting on the sidelines just waiting because, you know, yeah, we know that they're taking big losses, but they're going to take bigger losses soon. No, now, now it's going to happen. Dealerships are going to slowly start raising their prices back up because now you have to understand that there's no factory money involved. They have to make a profit. Now, are you going to make a better deal on a 2023 than a 24 still? Absolutely. Are they going to take losses on the 23s now? Probably not. Probably can buy one for invoice if you're financing. You can probably buy one for a 3% markup or 2% markup. But that big money losses that dealerships were taking... Over the last five months, I don't think it's going to last very much longer. Now, things can change, you know, but after the phone calls I was on today, it sounds like dealerships are like, no, nope, we got to go back to making money. If that means we sell less units, then we sell less units. We, we, we just can't sit here and keep 
hemorrhaging money. If the factories are not going to participate, we're just going to we're just going to keep them on our lot. We're not going to sell them for a loss. Cuz here's the thing, here's a fact. And, it, and 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 you know, this is where I disagree with RV Miles. I disagree with RV Miles in two respects. Respectfully, not not disrespectfully, respectfully. I disagree with RV Miles. If you were a dealership after 2000, December of 2021 and you were charging MSRP, or I'm sorry, after December of 2020, if you were charging MSRP after December of 2020, you're an idiot. And you probably weren't selling very many units. Most dealerships were discounting units in 2021. Were they giving the big heavy discounts they were back in 2018 or that they're doing now? No. Did the profit margin increase compared to what it was, you know, in 2018-19? Absolutely. But then dealerships slowly start. See, there's there's this there's this perception out there. It's a perception that the manufacturers didn't make any money. And that the dealerships were making all the money hand and over fist. Okay. So I've talked about this before. If you're a dealership, you're a mom and pop shop. Now maybe Camping World made a killing. I don't know. Maybe the big corporate stores made a bunch of money. But I don't think they made that much money either. Because it was such a short period of time. I think that the amount of units and the revenue they brought in probably was at an all-time high. But I don't think they made the money that everybody thinks they made. Because I know what the expenses are. You know. Now, that being said. So here's the difference. Let's say let's say that the camping world in... Uh, or no, let's just, use, let's just use my dealership in Beaumont. So the dealership I used to work for called Beaumont RV, uh, Southern California. Okay. Um, we would... Um, let, let, let's say a normal month we would do 25 units and the average profit on the sale of an RV is roughly about $4,000. Now there's more money that can be made if you finance it, more money if you obviously buy accessories, if you buy stuff, but basically the, the profit margin is usually between five and 9% depending on the product. And because we don't carry a bunch of high dollar stuff, the profit margin isn't that big, okay? Now, when you're selling, let's say, 20 units, let's just make them easy numbers. So 20 units at four grand, that's $160,000 in profit. So at $160,000, uh, the owner probably pocketed eight eighty five hundred bucks. Now, you have to understand, if he does that with all seven locations, that's a pretty damn good month, okay? So let's go into COVID. Let's go 2020, when there wasn't very much inventory. That's when dealerships were st selling stuff for sticker prices, right? Well, I was in a little location that you really couldn't get to unless you wanted to. It was a pure internet store. So we discounted things between 20 and 30% off MSRP still. But our profit margin went from four grand up to $10,000. We were making $10,000 per trailer, per fifth wheel that we sold. But instead of selling 20, we were selling between 8 and 10 because we didn't have enough inventory in stock to sell 25. That was a super majority of 2020. Okay? So... When you're only doing, so let's just say we did 10, that's a hundred grand. hundred grand doesn't cover the bills. It doesn't. hundred grand did not cover the bills. Now, thank God we were making money from the bank loans and stuff like that. And the owner did put a little bit of money in his pocket. And we did have a uh, storage facility on site. So the owner ended up putting some money in his pocket. The owner's not putting... 150 grand a month in his pocketbook from our location. You can't put that much money in a bank account when you're selling 8 to 10 units. 
Now, obviously, 2021, a lot of the inventory started getting straightened out. You guys know the story. Record amount of RVs built in 2021. 662,000 new RVs were built in 2021. Now, our profit margin went down because we started discounting them more because the competition around us started discounting theirs. So our margin went down, okay? We weren't making 10 grand a copy anymore, but we were also selling 30, 35, 40 units. So the owner did put more money in his pocket because we sold more units at the same profit margin we were making stuff at, plus any of the financing money. So when we doubled it, we were doing 320 grand to $350,000 in, pro in, in profit. Now the owner was putting some money in his pocket. Well, that money disappeared because now we've taken heavy losses to sell inventory. So it's all a wash. If you really think about it, it's all a bloody wash. It's all screwed up. Okay. So the, the RV manufacturers made money hand over fist. 1.6 million new RVs were built in a two and a half year period. And you're telling me they didn't make any money? Even at inflated prices? I mean, you guys saw what they were doing. We couldn't even predict what pricing was going to be. If you wanted to do an order, we couldn't tell you what the price was going to be. Because it's like every two, three weeks, we're getting a price increase and a price increase. The increases in price on the dealership went up almost 65%. And your te plus plus shipping went up to ship a fifth wheel from Indiana to California was close to twelve thousand dollars. When in 2017, 18, 19, it was a quarter of that. So don't give me and, and and again my RV miles. I mean this very respectfully, brother. This is not an attack against you. I just want to clarify with you that I don't think you have all the information, okay? The information is when you build 1.6 million at inflated pricing, there's no way they were just, oh yeah, we're just only doing it at our cost. No, they rate they jacked up the prices on the dealerships in order to sell the inventory when interest rates went up. Dealers had to take losses. They had to hemorrhage money. Camping World, Bishes, Lazy Days, General, my dealerships, Bobby Combs, uh, freaking Apache Camping. They were all bleeding money. Everybody. Brett's RV in Montana and Idaho. Losing money left and right to sell units because we were overstuffed. Now, where I agree with him 100% is it is half the dealership's fault. It's not just on the manufacturers. It is on the deal. It is half on the dealers too. Okay. Because nobody woke up and smelled the roses going, wow, this ain't going to last forever. Okay. So the, the reality of things is, is to me, the D, the manufacturers are half responsible for all this. They should participate in half. I don't care if it's Camping World or Little Mo Mom and Pop in South Florida or Little Single Location, Single One Person Running a Store in Ventura, California. Doesn't matter. The factory should participate in half the loss. In my opinion, I think, and this is just what I feel, I think the manufacturer should write a check directly to each, man each dealership. Retroactive. To August of 2022. That's just my opinion. And again, I'm a little biased. Let's be real. I'm a little biased because I'm in I'm on the retail side of the industry. Right? Okay. All right. Now frame flex and frame failure. So I have some updates for you guys. It's very interesting. I have marked emails. And I don't have, again, I don't have enough data yet to be conclusive. But it's very interesting that Grand Design Solitude and Grand Design Momentum, it doesn't matter what series or what model number, 
I have gotten at least three emails on every single model of a Momentum fifth wheel and a Solitude fifth wheel. And it's a mixed bag of 2018s to 2024s. So there's even, even people that are reporting to me that their 2024 Solitudes and Momentums are having frame flex or frame failure. But there's a but involved in this. We now have a new contestant, and that is Keystone Montana High Country. In the last four days, I have received nine emails and a couple of comments about Keystone High Countries. So I have now added them to the list. Remember what I said. It wasn't just Grand Design. I knew there were going to be others. But it's real interesting. Really interesting. Because most people are blaming Lippert. Lippert has nothing to do with it. They don't. Because Lippert chassis are used on a lot of high-end fifth wheels that are not having frame failure problems. A lot of mid-tier fifth wheels that are not having frame failure problems. It's what they're doing at the factory level that is causing this. It is what is happening at the engineering level that's causing this. So, so far, I haven't really heard anything about regular Montana. I've had one regular Montana one Montana Big Sky, which it was an older one. Have not heard anything about Keystone Cougar. Not one Keystone Cougar. Not one Grand Design Inflection. Oh, sorry, Grand Design Reflection. Not one. Uh, I have not heard anything about Cedar Creek, Riverstone, Mobile Suites, Redwood, Rockwood Flagstaff. Um, I've had a couple of Jacos here and there. Not very, nothing to be like worried about. Remember, I talk about there's always bad apples off a tree. I've had two Jayco North points so far. Both of them are older, like 2015, and one was a 2016. Oh, and I had a, I'm sorry, and I did have a 2019. So it's three Jayco North points. So nothing to like scream and ring the bell. Okay. But now I have enough people telling about Keystone, Montana, high country that now it's kind of sparked the, the hairs on the back of my neck. Like, huh. So what is Keystone, Montana, high country and Grand Design Solitude and Momentum doing that is causing this massive problem? Okay. Now, the biggest fear I have is the bigger I dive into this, the more you folks are just not going to want to, you guys aren't want to buy anything, which I understand, okay? But one thing I want to point out is I put out a poll, and it's so I want to, at the same time I talk about frame flex, I want to talk about quality too overall, okay? I talked to a gentleman last night, he was on the live stream on the main channel, um, Talked about toy haulers mostly. And we talked about quality. Okay. So I had to put a poll out there. And so far, a lot of you respond to the poll. Um, it said, What is stopping you from buying a RV in 2024? The very first thing I said is, Joe Biden is president of the United States. 14% of you said that you're not buying in 2024 because Joe Biden's the president of the United States. That's kind of sad. And I'll explain why in a minute. Uh, 4% of you is worried that Donald Trump is going to be our next president. And that's not where you're buying an RV. Again, that's sad. That's 18% of people that are worried about the election. I want to go, I want to cover that here. Okay. Uh, cost of living is hard. That was 16%. That's completely understandable. Interest rates, 13%. <clears throat> that makes sense. A lot of you guys are, are, there are two types of buyers. You know, people always say price is important. Price is not important to some people. Most people will be happy to pay a higher price for a unit and get a lower interest rate. 
which is fine. Both philosophies are good. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to discount the price philosophy or the interest rate philosophy at all. But what really was interesting is the overwhelming overwhelming majority of you, 53% said quality concerns. Okay, so quality concerns. Let me help you out with that. The quality hasn't changed in 47 years. You can argue that fact with me all you'd like. I understand why you would feel that way because people even feel like older cars are better than newer ones. The quality of the build of an RV is identical today to what it was years ago. Okay? Everybody has problems. They build them the same freaking way, especially when they're aluminum sided. They build them wood frame, Pink Panther insulation. They do OSB or plywood on the floor. Um, you, you know, nothing's changed. Okay? Now, what did change for a lot of you guys is, number one, the internet. Okay? The internet changed everything. Because you have to understand that the internet is a great way of people to get online and complain about something anonymously or share their experience or sometimes they fudge their story a little bit, okay? L let me give you an example, okay? I had uh, a, a client of mine years ago. She was driving down the road in her motor home and her tire blew out, Okay? All she did for the next four months was complain that it was the biggest pile of crap. It's the worst quality. Don't buy any of them. She never had a problem with appliances or leaks or electrical or anything of that nature. It was all about it drove like crap and I blew out a tire. So she had a bad experience with this blown out tire because reality is she was on the side of the road for almost four and a half hours it took them four and a half hours to come get her. Uh, it, she spent another probably two hours in the tow truck trying to get the motor home to the nearest place that can actually put a new tire on. Then on top of that, she probably she had to pay for it out of pocket, and she probably hated that because she probably thought that it would be covered under warranty, that tires are covered under a, a factory warranty. And it just goes on and on and on. And then any of the little things, any of the little things, once that happens, if a cabinet handle comes apart, if the water pump goes out, even if stuff's covered under warranty, now every little thing that happens turns into a monster Armageddon type story. Now, I'm not trying to discount anybody. I hope everybody understands that. I'm not trying to discount those that are really having major problems. I'm not, okay? What I'm referring to is the big fish story. There's a lot of types of big fish stories. There's the guys that say, oh, I got 75% off on an RV. Then you go and show them your contract and they got the same price everybody else did. Everybody says they got the smoking deal of the century every time. Nobody ever says I paid full price. It's always a big fish story when it comes to what they purchased something for. So if everybody purchased for the smoking deal then there would be no business owners because every business would close their doors because they made no profit. Okay? Same thing, but, but see, on the other side, there's big fish stories that occur because once something bad happens, everything else is super magnified. And there's an escape for all that to vent those frustration, and that's called the internet. The people that are completely happy with their RV, don't say shit on the internet. Very rare. It's very rare for somebody to come on and give a positive review about an RV. Hell, most of the time, I believe that restaurant five-star reviews were paid for. There are car dealerships out there that bribe you for a five-star review. Because if you like the car and you love the car and they can tell you're not going to give them a review, they bribe you with a gift card. If you enjoyed your experience, come back, show us you gave us a five-star review, and we'll get you a $50 gift card to the parts department or $50 gas card. Dude, I went to a car dealership once and had that happen. When I went and bought my Hyundai Santa Fe, 
my wife and I don't put five, don't put reviews on. The only time my wife puts reviews on is if she's paid on Amazon or if she had a really nasty experience and she puts a one star review on somebody. Okay. So you know, it's it's rare. I don't say it doesn't happen, but it's very rare for you to find anything positive on the internet about any manufacturer of an RV. And it's been that way for the 15 years I've been in the business and beyond that. So quality concerns. So quality, I understand what we're going through with the frame flex and the frame failure thing. But the good news is, and this is where the internet is a positive thing, where those nastiness, you know, the 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 the, the people are having major problems. They need we need to hear about those things. Okay. So like frame flex, frame problems. Okay. So if you're worried about that, we've already narrowed it down to basically three brands that are the major problem. So just don't go buy those three brands. If you love Grand Design, so instead, fine. So instead of buying a Solitude or a Momentum, buy a Reflection. You know, if you loved a Montana High Country, go to a Cougar, go to a Rockwood or Flagstaff of Forest River. People just need to broaden their research and broaden their search pattern. I understand. It's 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 screwed up, guys, because think about it. Grand Design was put on a pedestal. They were put on this big pedestal as the greatest thing on God's green earth. All sunshine and rainbows. And when the thing that when the company that has the biggest reputation of being the best in the industry has all the has these Armageddon level issues. It makes you wonder about others. But you have to realize that Grand Design is still a new company. Even though they are owned by Winnebago, even though they were started by guys that started Montana Fifth Wheels and now have moved over to Brinkley, they are still a young company. They've only been alive for about 10 years. Rockwood and Flagstaff have been doing it forever. Cougar has been doing it forever. Jayco has been doing it forever. And I throw Alliance in there a little bit because Alliance is run by a guy that ran Heartland when Heartland was the best in the industry. So don't, don't wallow in the world of, and this is where I get frustrated with people like Amazing Liz or Liz Amazing or the hell she calls herself. This is the only frustrating part I have of her. Everything's garbage. Everything's terrible. Everything's horrible. So 1.6 million RVs were built in a two and a half year period. Let's say that we have, let's increase what I said last time. Let's say we have 25,000 people that have Armageddon level issues. Which is a lot, guys. I'm not discrediting it. I'm not giving excuses. I'm just trying to give you the percentages. Let's say it's 25,000. Let's say it's 50,000 out of 1.6 million. That percentage is still less than the auto industry on a lemon law basis. So just kind of keep that in mind, okay? I'm not t trying to push you any way or one, one way or the other. I'm just trying to give you guys, because I can tell that the biggest concerns are with quality. Biggest concern. I also want to say it's really sad for those of you that are worried about the election. It doesn't matter who gets elected, guys. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. It's going to be the same America in 2025 and 26, whether Joe Biden wins or whether Donald Trump wins or whether Robert Kennedy wins. Okay. He, he, you're going to wake up the day after the election and the world's going to still keep going. You know, if you're 55, 60 years old, okay, or older, if you have your AA, AARP card already, and you're done, you're not going to do anything if Joe Biden wins or Trump wins, and you're going to wait another four years to see what else happens. Life's going to go by that fast. 
I've watched it, guys. So my wife is in Mexico right now, okay? She's in Mexico right now because her uncle is pretty much on the last leg of life at 64 years old. He's, he's right there. Like, he had a heart attack. They don't know how long his heart's going to stay. He can't qualify for a heart transplant. Let's be real. We don't know when our time's going to be. If you haven't known before, my wife lost her son. She was pregnant with our twin daughters, and her 14-year-old son went to bed one night and didn't wake up the next. Do you think she gives a shit who, pre who the President of the United States is? Not really. She's going to vote. Because it's our right and our, our freedom to vote. But we can't control other people. And we can only control our own lives. So for that 18% that's worried about Joe Biden or Donald Trump. I kind of feel bad for you. Because I, I, I think that if you, and, and this is just, this is a suggestion. It's not me talking shit. This is not me talking crap. This isn't me trying to put you down or anything of that nature. This is just direct, straight talk. If you're worried about the election, if you're worried about Joe Biden or Donald Trump, try and experiment with me. Turn off Fox News. Turn off CNN. Turn off your TV. Get off political news for the next month. All of March. And then live your life as you normally do. And then tell me after March whether you care whether the election is going to, if the election is going to make a difference on whether you live your life or not. I guarantee you your life will get way more positive. I guarantee you you'll have more energy. You'll sleep better. I know I did. If you don't know, guys, I was a big Bill O'Reilly guy. Okay. I was a huge Bill O'Reilly guy. I never failed to watch Bill O'Reilly. And then Sean Hannity. And thank God I got off of every media. Because I got tired of it. One day I turned off all the news. And I woke up one day and said, Okay, I'll read articles about what's going on in the world. But if it's any political opinion piece or some kind of puff piece about something Trump did or something Biden did or something Obama did. I ignored it, went straight to the factual news. And boy, did my life get better. <laughs> my stress level went down. My health got better. It's crazy. Absolutely nutty how that works. So just something, just something. Cost of living part, guys, I mean, I understand. I mean, grocery prices are finally starting to kind of go down a little bit here and there. I mean, there's some stuff that's still really high. Milk is still, I mean, when a gallon of milk is still more than a gallon of gasoline, that's pretty rough. Um, you know, um, God, cases of bottled water went up this week. But, like, eggs went down. Chicken went down. Um, God, I noticed a loaf of bread finally got to be under $1.50. Uh, just stuff like that is is slowly but surely trickling down. But it's going to be a while, guys. I mean, cost of living stuff is, is rough because... This is why I say it's rough. is because let, the normal travel trailer payment is, let's call it, if you got good credit, you're buying a smallish one. 200 bucks, 300 bucks a month, okay? That sounds cheap, and it is cheap. But when you're sitting at home and have, trying to decide whether you're going to pay your cell phone bill or go buy groceries, it's really hard to want to buy an RV. You know, when you're trying to make business decisions about what credit card to pay this month or to even pay your credit card minimum payments this month, or that you don't have enough cash to go grocery shopping, so you got to put it all on a credit card. That's rough. 
that's really rough. That's that's tough stuff. So, um, we already talked about interest rates. So, until next time, guys. Remember, RV stands for Toolkit and Sense of Humor.